Hello YouTube, Balumatona here, and welcome to episode number 19 of this Let's Play Total War Three Kingdoms as Gong Du campaign. Uh, where we left off last time, let's go to our trusty diplomacy screen here. Uh, we are at war with an alliance enemy, our, the Alliance of the Locust Tree. Uh, our first real um, kind of major force uh, uh, of enemy here. But we have a pretty solid position to go against them. We have two full-fledged armies in the region. Uh, we have a third full-fledged army that's kind of just dealing with looters and stuff up here. And then our fourth full-fledged army, uh, led by He Yi over here, that is sort of just mopping up some towns and gaining us some territory in this region. That will hopefully uh, eventually be a stable border for us, so we can focus on this side, where we have the large alliance war. Um, and this can be more of like an economic producing, you know, kind of in the backgrounds, not really a, a need to defend sort of hub. That that's the plan. So eventually, I'm going to want to get some diplomatic relations with uh, Queen Zhu Rong, King Meng Meng what? What do we got? Meng Huo. Uh, you know those nations over there. But first and foremost, I did notice we got some exclamation points here. Your general was unhappy. Yes, we are expanding rapidly in the happiness front. Um, so that's something that we're going to have to take advantage of. But we did get, or we're going to have to take care of. Uh, but we did get the pass here in the last episode, which is very nice because this is not only now a defensive, uh, a nice defensive location, uh, an entry point into our homeland that we defend uh, and we have a great spot at. Uh, okay, I'm kind of struggling to explain it. Yeah, we want this pass too. If we could have these two passes under control, you know, any army that wants to basically pass into our mainland has to either go through one of these two passes has to march all the way around this side where they would have other passes that they have to deal with or go this long route or they would have to march up this way through the teeth of where I have an army. So, and there's actually another pass here that we could control this location. That's a very strategic pass. That's one that we're going to want to get for sure. Um, so it's a very uh, strategically advantageous position and one that we're going to want to use to our favor. Uh, let's take a look at what reform we're currently researching. Uh, we are doing, yes, a low-level reform that helps with just general satisfaction and gives us a little bit of enlightenment. It'll be two turns till we get that. Uh, let's take a look at our missions that we have here. Uh, we need to recruit a virtuous nobleman unit and uh, reach faction rank ascended, which we're slowly getting towards. And then armies, some armies do have action points available. Okay. First and foremost, this army. Uh, yes. Okay, we have a skill point available for Bei Bei Xiao. Bei Bao Shu, sorry, not Bei Bei Xiao. Uh, I keep forgetting she has the ranged uh, bow. Uh, we have reinforcement range when commanding. Armor for her retinue. Night battles for this army. That's kind of nice. Some uh, charge bonus. Yeah, okay. Income from commerce faction wide. This is a, a passive buff for morale. That's pretty nice. This is an active buff. For a heal amount, okay. I have that one already. So, I'm kind of thinking... I mean, this is a good one. I like the 10% uh, armor for her retinue. That's a nice one. I also like the passive buff for morale. So, any troops she's around, they're going to have higher morale. That's also good. Uh, do we want... Is there anything over here that we want to move towards? The campaign line of sight is nice. That is a nice one, which makes me kind of think Fury might be a good call here. The charge bonus for her own retinue is nice because the, she has the cavalry in the army. Yeah, let's do Fury, and then we'll do Clarity probably for her next uh, upgrade. Okay, so we'll apply that. Gets a little more instinct as well, um, which is always great with the uh, give the melee damage um, boost for her for when she ends up in a melee fight with her good weapon. So, yeah, that helps with the bonus for her Yellow Turban Horseman. Um, absolutely. So I'm happy with that. And the other um, characters we got here are just Low General Satisfaction, and it's Ren Tao and uh, Shen He Dang here. So literally both the generals of this army. I'm not sure why they're so upset. Um, you know, you'd think with... They desire a higher court position, basically, but you'd think with, um, you know, being generals in a, in a forward force that that's a pretty good position to be in, but it's, it's actually because they, just, they both just have this disloyal trait. Uh, which is quite unfortunate. So, yeah, I am working to boost up uh, satisfaction across the Empire. Uh, let's take a quick look through our commanderies here. Uh, and Ding, 
is upgrading, uh, yes, it's a drinking house, satisfaction building. Hanjong is upgrading their industry building there. Hidong, yeah, industry and the city itself. Jincheng, we got the entrenched garrison. Yes, that's uh, up here. So we're upping the garrison. Um, and do we have a drinking house anywhere else? So this one's already at Leisure House. We need this reform for the next level. Okay. Gotcha. Bunch of passes. Wudu. Yes, okay, we got Temple Shrine going there. That's great. Ji He. Okay. A lot of buildings. A lot of buildings that we're doing right now. I, I really like this. Yeah, there's the Satisfaction building going. Um, here we have, yeah, Militia Depot upgrading. And Shu and Shuo Feng has the Satisfaction building as well. So we're, we are really, you know, aggressively um, addressing this issue. Uh, but it is an issue nonetheless. All right. So this army, yeah, I think we would love to kind of move towards this uh, this pass here, the gate pass. Um, we'll definitely kind of just keep moving this direction for the moment. Um, yeah, it's going to... How many turns? Like Two more turns to get there. That's okay. We don't need to go into a uh, force march stance. That, that's all right. We don't think we need that. With this army over here, I mean, they are taking attrition currently. Uh, they are in territory that's not theirs. We'll let them keep taking attrition. I mean, there is no point in going in, in aggressively fighting an army um, to, uh, you know, that's going to be taking attrition turn after turn. If they come and attack me in the city, I'll be able to fight. I'll have an additional, you know, seven units from the city garrison uh, on my side. So, uh, yeah, I just don't, uh, I just don't see the uh, advantage to going and pressing them. Um, so that army will stay put in the city over there. And he's army over here. Uh, yes, we want to move after this large town. It is a Han Empire settlement. Um, should be a nice one to take. And it could be a nice, you know, first battle here. Uh, about seven and a half, seven minutes or so into this video. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a decisive victory. Let's go ahead and fight it. Let's take a look at the uh, tower setup that we have here. Yeah, definitely don't want to go in this brunt of towers here. Four towers pretty close together. Look at these odd angles, kind of overlapping ranges. Yeah. Um, actually, this is a very well-defended city. There's really no prime point to push in. Maybe, see this tower here, the range of this tower here, if I can just, I'll zoom in on this. It's a little easier to hit the towers. The range of this tower is, is sort of a vertical line coming this way. And then the range of this tower here is a vertical line this way, so then we would just have to deal with these four towers here in the middle. So I kind of like that as our starting point. Um, yeah, we only... I, I, this army, yeah, we only have the one unit of... Let me just gather, like, all my archers together. I believe it's only the one unit that actually can, um... Yeah, only the one unit that actually has fire. So we might just have to kind of go in and deal with the with the towers. Because I, I don't think really think I can take out, you know, four towers with the one unit of archers uh, on fire arrows. So that's what that's how we'll play it. Um, all these archers off skirmish mode. I do want the ones on that can fire fire on fire. But we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, advance on this settlement with our infantry. Um... As kind of like a frontline setup, uh, and we'll just have to deal with the brunt of the towers, that's okay. And then, yeah, generals and cavalry can be together. Uh, let's go ahead and let's see how they decide to defend here. Oh, they're going to come out at me? Alright, even better. If they don't want to use their towers, well, I am totally okay with that. Uh, you guys, why don't you back up a little bit into the rice fields? And we'll fast forward and we'll let them come into our range, and... Yeah, I never really understands this uh, the strategy that the AI sometimes does when it has towers to defend, but uh, you know what? I ain't gonna complain about it. There we go. Yeah, see, we're already getting some uh, some shots off from our from our archers here. And these guys have no ranged block chance, so yeah, we should be getting some good hits on them. And then there's their ranged units. So that's why I split up the generals into their own unit. Let's just we can just charge our generals forward and go take out the uh, take out the ranged units. Um, yes, yeah, speed and melee damage bonus for the generals. Let's go. And then yeah, another speed melee damage bonus. We can just kind of pile those up. 
generals all giving each other some perks here. And uh, I think this is going to be, this is actually kind of a, a total BS battle. They all just route just like that. Is that it? Wow, that, <laughs> that was, that was easy. That was a piece of cake. All right. Nice one. Cool. So, nice little city pickup. We get some good, uh, we don't really get much money. We'll just occupy the settlement. Commandery secured, Baxi. So, yeah, we had, um... We had the Baxi farmlands here, and we had the uh, Baxi, what is this here, a toolmaker, um, but we didn't have the city. So we do have the city now, uh, which is great, um, and you can see we are just, you know, if we go back again to, I like diplomacy mode, because it just makes it really easy to see what's going on. Um, yeah, you can see that we really have kind of like a nice, more secure border down here now. Um, shoe, uh, this is what, I, did I built the militia depot here, yeah, I just wanted some additional defense uh, capabilities. Let's see if we can't get into diplomacy. Like, Queen Zhurong, I, I would love... Um, she hates me. But it's trending towards, no, more negative. Uh, like, I would love to, you know, get, like, some sort of diplomatic... I can't make any alliances and stuff because of my current type, but maybe we can just get some sort of diplomatic, uh, treaty going, like something that would at least discourage any attacks. Like, she's very low on food. Why don't we offer, um, offer up some food here to where, yeah, so for two food, she's willing to give, like, four, and just to get a little deal done. Um, ah, this faction does not have the necessary reform. Okay, why don't we just request an upfront payment, see what we can get. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty nice number. Oh, it's going to be a really nice number. Yeah, but, I mean, that's fine. Again, this is just... Ooh, wait a second. She's got some nice armor, too, here. All right, that's worth looking at. No weapons or anything, but some nice armor. We got this uh, Tempered Iron Skin. Um, hurts speed and melee attack rate, but ups charge bonus instinct. That's kind of kind of a big trade-off there. This one, I think, is a little bit more appealing to me. Because it doesn't take out nearly as much ex uh, expertise and... Doesn't have as nearly as high of a speed and melee attack rate. I mean, if I added this into the trade, what does she value that at? 3.9? Um, oh, and an additional minus for trade ancillaries? She does not want to... If I added an ancillary in myself, does that get rid of that? No, she does not want to trade ancillaries. Okay, that's fine. Why don't we... Alright, we, we want like 12.80... Just see how, let's just make sure we're getting as much as we can out of this deal. All right, let's go like 1320 here. No, still willing to give 1350. No, 1340, 1335. All right, 1336. We're going to go for every coin we can because 1337 is what she's willing to offer. We're going to do this because we have the food, she has the money. And um, I just want some sort of deal with her, so that for 10 turns we have a deal and it will just discourage any sort of attack or aggression from uh, from where she is. Um, just to kind of at least get a little bit of security along that border. Everyone around me hates me. It's fine. Let's just, uh, now we got a little bit of security down there. And um, yeah, this army, you know, now we can move off, af off after Ba. Um... Queen Zhurong actually owns the city of Ba, so maybe we won't take the farm... Or we could take the farmland and then take the weapons craftsmen um, here. Uh, this might be the path that this army kind of continues along. Um, as it's taking settlements on its way back towards our mainland. Uh, there's... This is kind of funny. There is just a pass in the middle of there, in the middle of my lands that I didn't capture. Uh, yeah, this army doesn't have any movement points left. So yeah, if we take a look at our commanderies now, we have all our armies are good. Let's take a look at, like, potential building slots. Baxi, commandery secured. Um, we could up the uh, tool depot here. For We can't upgrade the communal grain farms. It's already at its max level. Um, we have food production for farming, building, um, and income from peasantry. It's not a very income-producing settlement. Uh, we could also upgrade the city itself. I guess we'll just do communal sharecropping. Why not? Do I currently have... No, see, my, my tax rate is actually currently uh, neutral. Um, 
public order across the board appears to be good and trending upwards. There were, yeah, there are a couple cities that are pretty negative. We're going to let those continue to trend upwards. Uh, we have no assignments available, although we got some ending soon. Uh, we'll can, let's keep spending some money here. I mean, Anding always has upgrade possibilities. Hanjong, Hidong, nothing. What what could possibly be upgrade? What's what's upgradable here? Oh, that's low. That's saying it's low public order. Okay, well it's trending in the right direction, so I'm not I'm not too worried about that. Uh, Wudu, yes, yeah, again trending in the right direction. We could, I mean, we could upgrade the city another level, but I don't think that's necessary. Uh, Jihi. Where is Jihi? Ah, that's over here. Jihi, it does have, we could do another, uh, upgrade the fishing port. One more level. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Uh, Luo Yang. Uh, we only have the coastal trading port. So, yeah, we can just kind of leave that as is. Um... Yeah, nothing to build there. Okay, so we're going to have a nice kind of financial uh, carryover into the next turn, which I think is great because we have so many buildings finishing next turn. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too long until... Oops, wrong button. Um, until we get to Ascended. We're about 100 points away. So let's go ahead and let's go to the next turn and see what happens. We've got full army here that we got to keep an eye on. I definitely don't like being at war with Yan Shao. I know he's a very powerful warlord. I remember him from my uh, Kong Rong uh, campaign that I, I briefly played. All right, that army moved towards the pass, it looks like. And yes, the looters did come attack the city, which is great because we will be able to attack an already sort of weakened army. Um, and we'll have a couple extra units on our side. So let's go ahead and fight the battle. Okay. Yeah, and we do have the... Oh, interesting how they set up here. Yes, we do have the advantage of uh, defending. Um, ooh, I like that. But we also... They also have, are attacking us in small forces on three different three different directions. So, they have the Yi Archers, a nice strong uh, Archers unit. Yeah, Yi Archers, some... You know, so, it looks like they're Cavalries on that side. Do they have that evenly distributed? Yeah, it looks like they got some kind of... Again, Archers, normal units... Okay, and then here's their one general. What kind of weapon you got? Weak weapon. Nothing, nothing too worrisome here. Uh, we can try to duel you. Um, they have a pretty similar setup on all sides. One thing we don't really have in this army is a large cavalry force. Uh, we do have large archery uh, forces. So we could, we'll probably want to spread out our army and, and uh, defend the gatehouses against these three units. So why don't we first and foremost... Take our two generals, and we're going to position our generals uh, on the side with uh, their general. Uh, I want to duel. I want to duel if I can. Uh, and if not, I do want to make sure that their general that can't tip the scales here. So I'm not. I'm not too worried about this flank. We're going to just put our two generals over there. All right. Let's deal with this flank first. We got some archers. We got some yeah cavalry. Uh, we got a nice array of towers here that are going to be firing into them. So let's take some front line. Uh, they have three cavalry units over here. So let's take some heavy halberd infantry, guardian of the lands units, and we're going to put one there, one there, and one there, guarding each entry point, and um, yeah, so that's the heavy halberd units there, and then we'll give, uh, yeah, we get a lot of archers, so we'll give maybe like, let's just put like two units of archers. Uh, defending there as well, and I think that's probably five units over here on those guys. I think we have a good matchup. Let's group them together right now. This one, yeah, we got some crossbowmen, so they're going to have longer range than me, and some axe uh, mercenary infantry, some axe infantry. Uh, this unit, these units are going to be funneled basically into this one stretch of towers here, so why don't we take uh, whatever a good ranged block chance frontline infantry is yellow turban warriors and we'll put the spearmen behind them as sort of a second line yeah we'll put these three units together here you know what these two units you can position like so as a backup to the front line and then 
take our three units of archers here. Off skirmish mode. Yeah, you guys are going to be returning fire. And yeah, why don't we put you on fire arrows? Um, because why not? And I think that's, uh... It's a nice little force there for that side. And then the third side, we have our generals over here, so I'm not as worried about this flank. Uh, but why don't we take our spearman captain with our pet two units of peasant warriors uh, in reserve. They don't have range block chance, so we're going to keep them back. Uh, yeah, we'll take... Actually, why don't we take all four of these guys? These guys will just kind of be our support for our generals. Uh, again, not too worried about them. Um, and then we'll put our... I don't really think we're going to need archers on that side. Let's take these two remaining archers and uh, use them over here. So yeah, we're going to up that force. Up these guys. Alright, cavalry. Where do we want them positioned? Uh, cavalry, why don't we put you over here and we'll run them out of the city and use them rather aggressively. And then the rest of our units here, let's take as sort of a... Uh, they can be, you know, shock troop reserve forces if units break through any of these spots here. Um, and we'll put our barricades on the side that I think is going to have... We'll just attach those barricades up. What deployables do we have? Uh, yeah, okay, why don't we put that there, and, uh, yeah, we don't need the rest. Alright, let's start the battle. This is always good. This is going to be kind of a pain to, um, manage, uh, unfortunately, but, uh, it's... that's okay. We'll make it work. Um... Let's go. Alright, he wants the duel. Let's go get him right away, for sure. I want to take that duel. Yeah, I'll accept that. Whoops, wrong button. Sorry. Towers are firing. All my units that are in the front line... Guard mode, please. Yeah, first unit of cavalry. How do they sneak in? That's ridiculous. Yeah, we're winning that duel pretty much off the bat here. Go ahead and use your killing ground attack. Yeah, they're all coming up the gut here, just as I assumed. So we're going to have those archers firing in on them. Looks like they're all coming to the right side. So let's take our archers here. And let's shift over to that position, please. Yeah, you guys jump, uh, jump after them. Good, way to go, Gongdu. Gongdu, back on your horse. But we're really in the trees here. Back on your horse, come on. There we go. Alright, once you're back on your horse, get after those crossbowmen. Alright, this front line over here has attacked, or has been attacked. Alright, archers. Back up. Behind the second line of infantry. More cavalry's coming in this way. Let's stay on them. Archers over, yeah, this front line is doing their best to hold. Let's bring uh, the other unit around. Okay, cavalry. Push out. Come on, Gongdu. Alright, cavalry's pushing out. Let's uh go after those Z archers. Ready! Feel the theory of the earth. There we go, they're routing. Stay on them. He can he can kinda handle himself over here. Why don't we uh bring those units to come help? Yeah, we got some cav. These guys are, are holding their own pretty nicely though. Alright, good. My cavalry is yeah, there we go. They're, they're getting pushed back pretty heavily over there. Yeah, okay, this is going pretty nicely, actually. Yeah, General, just stay on their range units out there. We got some uh, infantry coming over to support our other General. Uh, go ahead and take out those Black Mountain whatevers. Um, that unit's routing. Those units are routing. All right, Cavalry, come and hit that front line. Let's get aggressive over here. You guys move over. 
And this is actually a piece of cake. I spent so long setting up for this, thinking it'd be a little more difficult. Uh, it is not really. <laughs> Alright, our general, yeah, we got some, uh, we got some infantry now coming in for support, and, uh, with the infantry in support, I don't expect these guys to be able to put up much of a fight. There we go, stay on those archers. With the cavalry smacking from behind here, their units uh, should not be able to last too much longer. And how are we doing over here? Yeah, almost, almost done. Just a little bit of a front line fight uh, that my men are able to, to hold pretty well. Uh, yeah, stay on that cav. There we go. All right, all these guys are taken out. Vi okay, yeah, victory. All right, we're going to run these just down because this is an active army. So you guys go after the archers. You guys go after the Black Mountains. Why don't you guys come over here? Go after those ye archers. Generals. Please uh, ride these men down to the best of your ability. You guys aren't going to catch anyone. Just kind of hang out. Our men have no yeah, we're going to just kind of take out some of these units here. What is this, a cav? Yeah, that's a cav. Alright, turn to them. Good job, General. Go take them out. Yeah, we got a good amount of those guys before they escaped. Go after them. Alright, cav. Keep chasing these guys down. Let's see, can we catch... Maybe we'll be able to catch this unit a little bit. If you can go charge after them. Yeah, we want to take out as many of these enemies as possible. That city defense is actually super easy. Again, that kind of goes to my point. Like, it makes no sense that the AI so often, like, will just leave a city. You know? Like, and, and just leave the towers. Like, not, uh... It just makes no sense. I mean, you can see how, how powerful um, using the tower defenses are. And I just, I'll never understand why sometimes they just choose not to. Yeah, stay on them. We're not going to catch that front unit. That's alright. Go ahead and hit those guys, and that should be that. Alright. I expect to get a pretty good amount of money from this one. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. Almost 2,000. Uh, we can get another 1,263 by ransoming, yeah, absolutely, and they're gonna still take attrition, which is perfect. Okay. So not too much happened, though, I mean, that battle happened, but not too much happened in that, oh jeez, alright, we're gonna re revisit the buildings, that's a lot. Character developments, whoa. Uh, that is a lot of people of virtue. Did a huge faction just get destroyed or something? Uh, ten U's coming back. And Silvery's gains. We got a Master's Leather. Okay. We'll check those guys out. Alright, let's take a look at the buildings. So, Woodoo got its Temple Shrine. Um, yeah, we're going to want to up that another level to keep the public order and income from all sources going. Great. And Ding, you got your Drinking House complete. That is your Satisfaction building. We're going to want to continue the upgrade on that for the next level of Satisfaction. He Dong. Um... He Dong had two buildings finished, the city and the Iron Craftsman, uh, Iron Craftwork Village. So, yeah, we got more industry income here, as well as the city uh, is complete. This is a settlement that is struggling badly with public order. Um, so we're almost certainly going to want to get the public order building, uh, a public order building in place here. Uh, we could probably want to, we'll probably just do the satisfaction combined with public order building because um, that is just a nice one that I've kind of been building across the board and it, you know, we need the satisfaction too, so we'll keep that going. Uh, nice that that city was built as well. Joint Manufacturing Hall in Hanzhong. Uh, joint Manufacturing Hall was this one for more industry income and there's nothing there that we want to build right now. Hidong, we already did. Shofeng, drinking house is complete. Uh, that we can't upgrade that. I need to upgrade to a small city in order to do that. Okay, so we could upgrade to a small city. Uh, it's not that expensive. We'll do that. Okay, small city. Shuofeng. Jinchang, entrenched garrison. 
Yeah, that's a pretty cool garrison building. All right, nothing else to build there. Wine vendor is complete. Yes, we will continue the upgrade path there uh, for another another um, satisfaction and public order purpose. So we're, we're keeping that going. And, of course, we do have our reform that is adding satisfaction next turn as well. So that should help with these guys. You can see they're already a little happier. Already a little happier as there's drinking houses and wine vendors everywhere. Uh, first and foremost, let's just jump back in here. Obviously, we're going to go want to take out the rest of this looter's army instead of letting them replenish and come back. So let's go knock them. And this should be an absolutely decisive victory, but we'll have some more fun with it and fight a night battle. Take a look at the night battle and battlefields here. Oh, I just, I, uh, it's kind of glitching out a little bit, but night battle's cool. It, it's just, it's just a cool little setup. All right, they set up on the hill. No surprise there. I love the lanterns with the units. Cool touch. Um, we're gonna just kind of do our use here. Let's get our front line together. Archers behind. Pikes in front, archers behind. And definitely we'll want to activate fire arrows, flaming shot for a night fight. Generals, archers, I forgot. You want you guys grouped together and we'll move you in formation. Cavalry. Yeah, they do have a couple ranges. Are they going to come towards me? Sweet. Can I get another duel going? No, oh, I can. All right, let's go duel. Yeah, this should be an easy, easy kill again. I don't know if that's the same guy as last time. I, I kind of don't think it is. But uh, yeah, we'll duel. That's an e It's going to be an easy, easy victory with my like two thousand damage weapon. Where is he? There he is, coming out to duel as his army haphazardly approaches around him, and we got the first hit. He's already down to 14k health. This is going to be a stomping. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and use our killing ground attack as well. Boom. What's he down to? Is it uh, still 14? That doesn't make any sense. 12. There, okay, yeah, it just took a second to... Took a second to register. What's the button to get rid of the UI? K? Yeah, there we go. Oh, we got a hit on me. Hey, get out of there. That's my faction leader here. Okay. Okay. Respect. And he's down to 5k health. Won't last too much longer. Our archers are about to open fire. Should be opening fire on these guys with no range block any second now. There comes some fire shots. And Gong Du 1. Yeah, all, all kind of coming together at the same time there. That should be a huge morale hit to their army. You can come out and press the archers. Yeah, they're not even going to... I mean, they're not going to reach my front line. This is just going to be a, a stomping here. Gong Du is going to immediately join the fray. Look at this. They're all just bunched together. Fire arrows raining down on them. Some of those units do have a really nice range block chance. Let's just go do the most damage we can to these cavalry units with our with our generals here. We'll use our splash damage attacks, try to take a bunch of them out. There we go. And that's literally it. I mean, their whole army's already <laughs> already routing. Wild. Uh, you guys go after those uh those archers. Let's see how many of these, let's see if I can't chase down some of these cav units. Yeah, we can actually, we're actually faster than some of the cav here, so we'll chase them down for a minute. Alright, go ahead and take them out. Go ahead and take them out, and this is just uh, cleaning up the mess, basically. Go after them, go after them. Cav, good job. Uh, why don't you chase down that unit? There we go, Gong Du. Come on, finish them off. There's only a couple left. Right, get that last guy, come on. There you go. How are they doing over there? I guess they all kind of finished off their men. Oh, I thought that was the edge of the map. That's just a ridge. 
Oh, these guys, yeah, they're 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 totally screwed. They, they don't, I thought I was running out of time to chase them down. I was not. And yeah, go finish those guys off, and that will be all for this fight. Should be an ab absolutely decisive victory. Uh, I I don't. They might. Um, I don't know if the army will persist. They might have a little bit of cavalry left. It's tough to chase down the cab, you know. Um, but I don't know if that's enough to keep the army going. Let's uh, let's see. Should get some good money from this too. Oh, looks like we got the finishing blow. Yeah. Anyone stand back up? Oh, 29 remaining and they came back. Really? Gained a nice another chunk of money. Um, yeah, we'll execute because we'll take that expert's leather, uh, leather. And yeah, we'll take that at almost 1,000 bonus income as well. Uh, I mean, we're talking about... This is this is stupid. It's just some cavalry units. Resist corruption and endure hardship. These uh, looters are such a pain. Now, honestly, let's just take my generals and cavalry, and we're just gonna well, we're just gonna full full on charge them. Yeah, we get the speed passive buff and stuff. Uh, why don't we why don't we do it together here? Yeah, we'll, we'll charge in together so that the passive buffs can take effect. <sighs> charge! <laughs> yeah, this is just complete. I can't believe this army didn't just leave. Yeah, you guys chase after them. The time has come. Generals, let's just try to knock these units out. Take heed, warriors. Chase after him, please. Go, go, go. Yeah, I know I'm going to get victory. It's just about... I want to finish them off. We'll let our generals go chase him down. Are we gonna get him? Oh, he's so far away. Is this the last guy? No, there's two left. Where's the Where's the last one? Is that him over there? Come on, get him! Oh, there. Oh, he's screwed. Yeah, two generals going after him. Adios. You're done. All right. This time, there's no coming back. Justice cannot be denied. And uh, yeah, we got another like hundred, one hundred three. Oh, you know what? Look at that. We got another 103. It's actually going to be almost another 3-something. That's that's pretty nice. There's the ancillaries we gained. You guys. Back into friendly territory, please. We get the replenishment. Alright, good. Nice fights uh, up there. Let's now focus on the actually more contentious region uh, down here. I mean, we do want to move on that pass. I do think that the... A uh, Han Fu army moved towards the pass. Let's just kind of move up the hill. Can we get a view on it? Yeah. There they are. So they're gonna... This is gonna be untakeable. This army will not... Will not win this fight alone. Uh, a pass, you know, which has quite a solid garrison, plus a full-fledged force. That guy looks... That guy looks pretty intense. I mean, look at... Oof, look at that. Um, Alright. So let's then... We might... I mean, we definitely have to be worried about this army marching this direction. I think we'd be able to go and intercept, if that's the case. Uh, their level 4 city over here is vulnerable. Uh, let's take a look at our people of virtue, because there were uh, quite a lot of candidates that came in out of nowhere. So none are legendary characters, um, but there is a little bit of an opportunity here. Um, if I could, you know, some of these generals that just have the traits, like, like see how happy most of my generals are? You know, it's really just these two guys. Um, and so I could kind of have an opportunity to replace them. Um, you know, Rentau. Uh, let's just get into this already. Rent, we got a, one of them's a scholar and one of them's a vet. Uh, if I want to go into the court here, I mean, you know, we got other veterans here like Hu Yu. Uh, he comes with a composite bow, pretty bad armor. Overseer is nice. That's actually really nice. 
Um, ooh, a gray elite horse. That is a gold horse. That's awesome. Terrible weapon, but we got plenty of weapons. And then he has coordinated pacifist. Okay. And creative. Um, he was yellow. Oh, maybe the yellow turban rebellion. Did the yellow turban? Re are these all yellow turban rebellion people? Oh, they totally were. I bet you the yellow turbans just got wiped out. Um, pretty decent stats. Uh, I mean, he's thirty-five. He's level four. You know, those stats aren't amazing for a level four, but like you know, it's just good. There's good options here. I mean, this guy's got a very nice book. Uh, a, ve a nice bronze officer. Um, well, he would never be a lord of virtue or faction leader, so temperamental is not horrible. Lawyer is, gr uh, sorry, lawyer, <laughs> loyal is great. Um, that would help with uh, his satisfaction. He's uncomplicated. Um, recruitment cost for his army is unfortunate. Um, and he's greedy. Okay, yeah, that's not a good guy. That We don't want him. Rumeng, Scholar, uh, I mean, I'm just going to take a minute to look through all the options here. He's perceptive, that's nice. He is tolerant, that's fine, because he wouldn't be a, a, anything important. Um, charismatic is also pretty nice. Uh, he does not come with anything remarkable. Uh, pretty uh, whatever stats, I mean, his expertise and authority is pretty solid. He'd probably switch to Legendary pretty soon in expertise. Level 3, pretty old, though. Um, this guy, I mean, that's, that's a good book. He's got five traits. Ooh, okay, so he's bright. He's suspicious. That's a good one. He had the two good ones. Cunning, also good. Understanding, frivolous. I mean, those are all pretty good. The character experience thing's kind of a bummer, but it's not. That's not crazy. Um, good resolve, you know, good cutting, and again, he's kind of old, level 4. Um, Bing Yi, nothing remarkable here. Yeah, nothing remarkable. Bu, Bu Hang, <laughs> veteran, uh, nice book. Bodyguard's cool, nothing else too crazy. He's almost legendary in resolve, he's a little bit younger at 39, level 4, so probably would get legendary with his resolve pretty soon. Um, these don't look good. Intimidating. Oh, no. Firing and Intimidating are actually both very good and superstitious. Um, he's a nice option. I like Bu Hang. Pan Hui Shu. Uh, sorry for that stupid... I don't know. Whatever. Don't know what that accent was. Nope. Don't like that. I don't want any more people that have uh, want higher office. Nope. Can't do that anymore. It's so annoying. Uh, artful. Selfless. Cordial. That's cool. God, there's so many. Uzukai, nothing, nothing too remarkable. Young, 22, and almost legendary. He is okay. What about traits? Charismatic, cautious, patience. Okay. I kind of like him. Young general, you know that, that'd be a, a long time to. Uh, you know that could be a, a general who I would have for a long time. G Lin. It's a nice book. I like. I do like Bodyguard. Fifty-five. Eh. Not really the best traits. All right. Forty-nine. Scholar. She's a Potter. <laughs> um. No. Done. No. Defiance. Brave. Suspicious. Nice traits. Young. All right. So, got a few options. Um, no doubt here. I, I do think that uh, in this army here, I mean, Shen He Dang is nothing special. He's 24. His, care, his traits are terrible. Um, I hate that I trained in a whole army for him and spent the money on that, but you know what? It, I didn't have any options at the time. Um... Yeah, I mean, basically, we're just, you know, we're gonna just have to... We're probably gonna get rid of them. We're gonna switch them out. Um, so, it's unfortunate. I mean, what are you gonna do? First and foremost, we are going to remove his weapon. No, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, we're gonna give you, like, our crappiest weapon. We're 
going to take back our stone monkey and give you like our worst thing that we got here. Yeah, you can take that. Follower is pretty bad. Um, and then same thing with Ren Tao. He's a legendary veteran, but he's older. He's kind of a huge pain. Disloyal. I mean, I love the brilliant trait. You guys know that. I always talk about how much I love the brilliant trait. But And he's got such a good retinue that I, I, I put in for him with the archers because he's brilliant. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, it's just the same situation. Uh, it just, the disloyalty factor is just too, it's just kind of too heavy. Um, so we'll just give them some tough, uh, you know, some bad ancillaries here and, uh, you know, and, and kind of shoot them off into the wind. So we definitely want to bring in at least one veteran and one scholar uh, out of what I out of the court. Um, who did I like? I liked this guy, the twenty-two year old, level three, um, with very solid traits. I mean, it increases ambition to gain uh, independence as administrator. Uh, I mean, that's fine. I don't think he's gonna, you know, be like in an administrator position for me. Uh, he doesn't come with anything too nice, but his, his stats, you know, his stats are high. They're good. Like, he's about to, he's about to switch to Legendary. Um, I think we'll recruit in him. Welcome to the Force. So that's one, uh, that's one Scholar. We definitely want one uh, Veteran as well. Um, I mean, these early guys were pretty appealing. Was there, a, I should have, like, taken notes on this. Was Boo Hang good? I feel like... No, Bu Hang was yeah, Bu Hang was good. Uh, the superstitious guy. Now he comes in with a nice book and a nice bodyguard, almost legendary. Uh, what does philosopher give him? That gives a research rate bonus. That's nice. Um, his cunning isn't that high. So we'll bring him in. Bu Hang. Uh, how much? I got, you know, I'm just kind of thinking this could be just this is just a good opportunity to bring in some generals, uh, generally. Because, obviously, I want to replace those two guys in the army that they're in that are just kind of being a pain to me. Um, but also, you know, if I want to build up a fifth army and, and get another force going, uh, it would be useful to have... Again, I, I like armies that have one of each general type, you know? I have three general types. I got Scholar, I got Healer, and I got Veteran. You know, so having one of each is just a nice combo. So we basically have recruited in two that can re potentially replace... Um, what we have so far, and so now I'm gonna try. I want to recruit in one more of each type if I can. Um, pro yeah, we're probably this guy's not good. No, okay, so I'm going through the veterans right now. So Jiwen is not it. That gives three more options. We have Zhao Jimao. Uh, yeah, I do like this guy's traits. Very strong traits. A lot of traits. Um, he is older, um, but that's okay. He comes with a great book. I like the foreman. Um, good stats. I mean, uh, okay stats. I mean, he could be solid. Um, we got Wei Shi. And all these guys are, uh, you know, this is, he's the oldest. Okay, so let's just take like Hu Yu really quick. I do like the bow. I like the overseer. I love the gray elite horse. Um, this stat, pacifist, isn't the best, but, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not the worst. I mean, mustering turns and a little bit of instinct loss, not the biggest deal. Like, this could be a guy that I could actually put in to be a Lord of Virtue, maybe. Um, 35. Pretty good stats. Uh, pretty good stats. And really good stuff. Yeah, well, I want I want his horse. I want his, you know, we're going we're gonna to bring him in. All right. And then let's take a look at the scholars that we have left here. There are four. Um, we have a 56-year-old. Uh, what That guy, who are you? What is he? He's Sorcerer. Oh, so that actually kind of balances out the mustering turn turns one. Uh, okay, and then yeah, what military wise? What do we got? I mean, we can. This is stuff that you can't see until you recruit them, unfortunately, but it's fine. Um, all right, so let's take a look at our uh, um, veteran or sorry, scholars. Okay, fifty-six year old Potter. Stats are not great. I mean, they're uh, sorry. Traits are not great. They're fine. I, they're kind of good. They're they're whatever. Um, all right, Rumang, Bing Yi, 
even older, nothing great. Okay. 49. Nope. 30. With great traits. 30 years old, level 3. Yeah. That's what we're going to go with. Potter. That's all I have uh, financially, it, the ability to do this turn. Um, we're definitely going to My Lord, I answer uh, want to do some work here. So let's... Uh... Yeah, we're going to want to recall the selected retinue. Yes. I am at your disposal, my lord. And then same here. I mean, could I, like... If I disband the unit... I mean, if I... You know... I actually didn't think about it. Do I get money back? I don't think so. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's just... Welcome, my lord. Your presence is heartening. Yeah. Okay. Recall... Yeah, because we, we get the added income from the less upkeep. So now she is here alone, and if we wanted to recruit in added generals, um, yeah, you can see here's like the new ones that we brought in. Uh, looks like they she gets along with a uh, Wu Zikai and uh, Bu Hang. Um, so that I guess is who we put together in an army here. Um, yeah, you can see here are, like kind of the new people that we. That we brought in. Uh, did we recruit this guy in this turn? Uh, all their satisfaction is pretty high. That's how I want it. Um, so Wu, let's let's take a look at let's so let's take a look at these guys. So Wu Zikai and Bu Hang um, are people that uh, yeah these are some of the ones that, that would get along with her. So what does he have? He has a passive buff for melee attack rate and a splash damage attack. Perfect. Great. I, I love that. Um, and then we have uh, income from commerce. Uh, okay, this one gives construction time, melee evasion. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely bring him into the army. Um, yeah. Military-wise, okay. Nothing too fancy. And then, uh, yeah, so that's who you can say Bu Hang. Wu Hang has all three of the base ones. Nice. So he gets the passive buff for charge resistance and armor, the active buff for immobilized, and the active buff for speed. Great. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, those are all very, very nice. Uh, and then we have Fanaticism, which gives melee armor piercing damage, melee damage, and replenishment for the army. Okay, nice. And then we get uh, movement map range, uh, campaign movement range for the army, and speed for his retinue. So this guy, this, I like him. I like him a lot. And I like his, uh, I like his stats, too. Um, Devoted Student is a nice one. Okay, Philosopher gives the Research Rate bonus. Yeah, so we will bring them into the army. Uh, this is something that we're going to need the finances to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, so let's pull... We also have a Kui Sin. Kui Jin. He had been doing assignments for me. Uh, maybe, do I want him to come into a force it, as as my scholar instead of Wu Zikai? Potentially. Let's bring in Bu Hang this turn, and we'll take a look at that next turn, because Bu Hang is nice. I know I want him in as my veteran in this army, so we'll confirm and we'll bring in that force. Our finance, we're going to need the money to do all this recruitment and, and bring people in, so uh, I do think we're going to want to... Um, we're going to want to bump up our uh, tax rate here. That will cause public order to drop for one turn across the Empire. But, again, in most places, that's not super significant. There are only a few settlements where that's an issue, and we can easily revert that the next turn. Uh, I just think 7,000 next turn when I'm going to be, you know, recruiting in, um, when I'm going to be recruiting in a lot of troops and everything, uh, is, is going to be very valuable. Uh, so I'm going to want to do that. So that pretty much takes care of it this turn. Low general satisfaction. It's just Ren Tao and Shi he da Shen He Dang now. I mean, next turn, you know, I, I mean, I really could, like, release from service. I could banish them to get a little bit of added money, but that would give a satisfaction hit, which, you know, I'm trying to avoid. Let's wait one turn and see what happens, and uh, we will move on 
Yeah, because they're one turn until they come back. We will move on to the next uh, turn. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that. What do we got? Low public order. I'm just checking the two notifications. Okay. A lot of moving parts here. A lot of moving parts. But it's important to get these armies right. God, oh. Gunson Shook saying is going to be annoying here, isn't she? Yan Shu vassalized Wang Lang. Okay. Yellow Turban Rebellion signed a peace treaty with Wang Lang. Queen Zhu Rong signed a peace treaty with Wang Lang. Heavenly Reason. Okay. Let's get rid of all those notifications. Um, faction developments. New faction capital. Okay. Uh, if we can go into the diplomacy screen here uh, really quick. We are really only at war. Why? That says, why when I go into diplomacy? Gonson Shuksang. It says I'm at war with. Oh, war and alliance war are separate. Yeah, I would love to not be at war with Gonson uh, Shuksang, frankly. Um... I don't really understand why oh, we're at war. It is you. She really doesn't want peace. Um, I think this is going to be too much of a bridge to gap. I just worry, like, these two armies that she just marched up are, uh, are quite large. You know, I'm thinking I should take this army and, like, retreat back to the, to Hidong. Each step in yeah, and that's what we're going to do. That way we can fight with the garrison if, if there's a fight. I think I might lose Liu Yang. Um, what is this here? Character developments. Uh, ready for duty, Shen Hidong and Ren Tao. Uh, I'm assuming they're still going to be pretty annoyed with me. Uh, where are they? Shen Hidong and Ren Tao. Oh, all of a sudden they're happier. I don't know, what do you know? Um... Court, Shen He Dang and Ren Tao. I think I might banish one and then um, just dismiss the other. Can I maybe like can I salvage one? Yeah, Shen He Dang doesn't actually. I think he's gonna be okay. Younger, twenty four. We'll just get rid of Ren Tao. Ren Tao is really just the only kind of pain in the ass one. Um. And then, yeah, I can take a five satisfaction hit across the board, I think. So let's... We're just going to get rid of Ren Tao. Ren Tao, You're banished. Alright. Nice. Okay. Uh, oh, we also... Yeah, we also finally finished that reform. That just gave us some satisfaction and some enlightenment, so we can do a new reform here. I mean, these high-level reforms only take eight turns now, uh, so there's definitely benefit. Like this one, eight satisfaction, five morale, 25 enlightenment, that's pretty nice. Plus two available trade agreements would be nice too. Plus 10% replenishment across the board would be very nice as well. These, yeah, it's kind of tempting to like go for a low level one that's gonna you know finish really quickly, um, just because I can like kind of knock it out. But uh, none of these are particularly jumping out at me. I, I know this one is useful for some buildings. Um, yeah, why don't we? I think we're gonna want maybe uh, heroes perseverance. Winter we'll go for all to a crawl, gifting us time. Buildings, uh, Militia Depot in Shu. It's finished. Yeah, I guess we can continue upgrading. Wine Vendor in Hidong. Yeah, we want that to the next level. Large Town in Shuofeng. That was pretty quick. Um, jetties can upgrade. That's kind of... Ex I'm going to save that money. I do want to, you know, make sure... That I am, uh, what's it called? That I'm, I have, you know, I have to recruit in units here. Um, so one, one thing that we do have to look at is, uh, who do we want to recruit in as this army's, um, 
That's this army's veteran. Uh, yeah, because we got... We, we got a veteran, sorry. We got a veteran and a healer already. Sorry, for this army scholar, um, who do we want to recruit in? Uh, we could do... I don't want... I mean, we could... Like, we could bring Shen Dang back. No, 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 no. He's... He's... Satisfaction, but yeah, yeah. He's not... It's just not worth it. I, in case I need to get rid of him. Um... We got, yeah, we got Woozy Kai as an option. Where was the other guy? I thought I had another guy that was going to be an option here. Isn't that like Zekin? Zishin? Uh, maybe we just go with Woozy Kai. I mean, you know, he's, he's fine. You know, he's got solid traits. Yeah, he's got the splash damage attack. Why don't we just bring him in? Alright. Remain firm. And then, um... Yeah, we're gonna have to put in some ranged units, you know, somewhere along the line here. Any of these guys... See, this guy has great stuff for, like, melee damage and whatnot. Uh, maybe, do you have anything that could possibly lead to ranged units coming up here with any bonuses for them. Fortunately, not really. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, this guy, I guess this is the one... Yeah, I guess next he would... He would get this one for... Um, some ranged armor piercing damage, fire arrows. Um, yeah. So he's probably going to be where we want to put our archers. And then we, yeah, we got, so we got four units of spear. So yeah, I think we'll probably want to bring in here. What do I usually go with? I, I don't need this men of the forest unit. Um,. Yeah, but these guys are a nice upgrade. The yellow turban archers instead of the peasant archers. Yeah, we're gonna bring in two units of them. I would like more than two. I would like four units of archers in this army. It's kind of a bummer to sort of waste his speed and melee armor piercing damage and melee damage bonuses, but um, he's gonna be the one that gets the archer buffs, so... Uh, that's how we're going to use them. Alright, and then our Scholar here. Yeah, I mean, he's got, you know, he'll be good. Well, you know, he's got the, the melee evasion bonus. Um, you know, we can get guerrilla deployment night battles from him. Uh, we can also get this armor bonus. I think he's going to end up being uh, pretty alright for his frontline troops. So, um, yeah, we could probably pull in... This, yeah, I, I kind of don't really like the Sky Heralds. You know, I don't really want, like, an unruly unit. Um, why don't we fill them out with Yellow Turban Warriors? And then I'm thinking maybe we want to get rid of these two Yellow Turban Warriors here and give him... You know, this gives us six... This would give us eight sword to four spear. I might want... I might rather go six and six here. So why don't we... Disband those two units and instead you know we can bring in maybe two guardians of the land or just yellow turban spearmen guardians of the land i don't like their lack of any ranged block maybe we can just kind of go with some yellow turban spearmen uh, i mean they are and we can pull in two units of guardians yeah let's pull in two units of guardians and that will round out that army. Alright, so I, I like the unit distribution um, in that army. I think it's, it's a good one. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty well set up for this turn. This force, we're not going to be making our way to that pass for the time being. So let's just backtrack to He Dang here. Um, cool. We have a thousand left. And what do we got in armies? Uh, action points available. Okay, so yeah, these guys. I just, I hate wasting an army, especially with such a good general. 
So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit in a new force using some of the people that we, the candidates that we brought in, and with that new force we can, um, you know, we can use as our defense force against looters while I take my stronger uh, general-led army, um, you know, with my with Gongdu himself towards uh, towards where we can use them in a fight. Um, we do have a thousand left, and I would like to recruit in one more of these people if I can. Um, who was like a nice young one that not really any great young options here. 43 year old way. She has temperamental, but he's not going to, yeah, that's okay because he's not going to be a, a Lord of virtue or anything loyal, which is great. Uncomplicated. Okay. Oh, no, 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 never mind. Don't like him. Ru Meng. I mean, is anyone, like, not in the 50s? <laughs> not really. This woman was bad, right? Yeah, she was bad. He's bad. Not horrible, but 61. Not ideal. Nope. We're just going to kind of rule out people pretty quick. Satisfaction in the army is not great. Yeah, there's got to be just like, if I'm just bringing in one person, I mean, there's got to be someone here. Yeah, this guy. I liked this guy. And he's a monk, which gives military supplies and stuff. Okay. This will be the last one we bring in. And we'll probably want to recruit in a defense force up there. So, how's our public order looking? We got five notifications for low public order now. I could really use the money, but I can't really sacrifice the public order, so we're going to carry that back down. And yeah, across the board now, we, we're pretty much gaining public order. That's good. Uh, we do have, I think, an assignment available. Yes, we do. Um, and we have a lot of options of who to use for this assignment. Uh, I'm going to definitely hold on to my one healer, but uh, yeah, we, I mean, I do like the super, uh, not supervised construction. I mean, we could use a uh, track talent. Um, for when we're recruiting a new army here. Why don't we use Shen Hidang, someone I know who's not going to be put into a force. And we're going to use him for public order purposes. Uh, maybe an And Ding, where we have public order issues, uh, because that is one of my primary cities, and I would like to recover the public order in that settlement. So Shen Hidang... Public order in ending. Go ahead. And I think that's a great spot to end this episode. We've been going for a while and we're right at the end of a turn. So thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know, as always, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, as always, everybody, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a good one.